John Robinson Lim Gokongwe, the second richest man in the Philippines, born in China but grew up in the Philippines. He is a shrewd businessman as well as a benevolent philanthropist with holdings in telecommunications, aviation, and financial sectors. How did he achieve this magnificent feat? Listen and find out. Born to a wealthy Chinese immigrant tycoon who was once the largest taxpayer in Cebu, John Gokongwe lived a life of luxury and affluence until his father died. At a young age of 13 years old, John Gokongwe supported his family by peddling items along the streets of Cebu from his bicycle. And from the age of 17 to 19, he traded using a wooden boat, taking items to Lucena by sea and then to Manila by truck. In 1996, John Gokongwe decided to start an airline. At the time, the dominant airline in the country was Philippine Airlines, and if you wanted to travel cheaply, you did not fly. You either went by sea or by land. John Gokongwe, however, had a vision that every Filipino would fly cheaply. And that's how Cebu Pacific started. Inspired by the low-cost carrier models in the United States, John Gohongwe believed that an airline based on the no-fills concept would work here. No hot meals, no newspaper, monoclass seating, operating with a single aircraft type, faster turnaround time. It all worked, thus enabling Cebu Pacific to pass on savings, not just to John Gohongwe himself, but to the consumer as well. How did they do this? By sticking to their philosophy of low cost, great value, and to this day, they still follow that philosophy. In 2003, John Gohongwe established Digital Mobile Philippines Incorporated and developed a brand for the mobile phone business called Sun Cellular. The question in everyone's mind was, how could John Gohongwe measure up to two telecom giants? They were already entrenched, and John Gohongwe was late by eight years. PLDT held the landline monopoly for quite a while and was first in the mobile phone industry. Globe was a younger company, but it launched digital mobile technology here. But being a late player had its advantages. John Gohongwe could now build a platform from a broader perspective. He worked with more advanced technologies and intelligence systems not available 10 years prior. Being a latecomer allowed John Gohongwe to create and launch more innovative products more quickly. Time. Sun Cellular was able to compete against PLDT and Globe, but being the shrewd businessman that John Gohongwe was, he knew that wouldn't last long, so he opted for another route. He negotiated with PLDT in offering his digital mobile technology in exchange for a major stake in the company itself. This transaction earned him double of what he invested into Sun Cellular increasing it by 1.7 billion and giving him stakes in the PLDD company in the future. Today, John Gokongwe does not take part as much in the stakes of his corporation and leaving it up to his son Lance Gokongwe. Although, giving his position as chairman to him, John Gokongwe still holds the position of chairman emeritus of JGS, using his huge amounts of experience to ensure that his companies expand even further long after his death.